very clean. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this edition of the Speakers and Leaders Hour. Rather than having our monthly meeting, as we do every 30 days here in Fort Wayne, tonight we are doing something special, and that is we are focusing on just one Toastmaster club here in the Fort Wayne area, a club that is celebrating its 28th anniversary. And that's quite an accomplishment. I was just talking to our area governor just a moment ago, and we have kind of come to the conclusion that Fairfield is now the fourth oldest club in the Fort Wayne area. And just think 28 years ago, we were all the new kids on the block. And here we are, a grand old 28 years. What we're going to do is we're going to have a Toastmaster meeting, much like we have every week at Penguin Point on the south side of Fort Wayne. With the difference being that this is a live, interactive TV show. Since you're not home, and you're obviously not out playing in the snow, and smart people that you are, while you've got your TV on, you might want to think about picking up your telephone and calling us, too, because this is live and interactive. So perhaps you know somebody on the set. Maybe you have a question about Toastmasters. Any one of those things, and we can have you on the air in just a few moments. Of course, we won't interrupt the speakers if they are giving a speech, but we will definitely get your questions and comments on the air. What's the phone number? The phone number is 422-3902. That's 422-3902, and we have operators standing by. <laughs> we do, honestly. And his name is Dennis. And I, in fact, I want to thank the people in the booth for being here tonight. Dennis Osborne is our audio technician. Elizabeth Lord is the technical director getting this program on the air. And we have two camera people who are really stalwart and very dedicated. And they're here again this month, and that's Robert Boyd and Don Rizwan. Thank you guys for being here and getting us on the air. Well, let's start with some introductions. We'll start on my right, your left, and that whole table of people. And here are the names of the people who are in that group. And maybe we can get them on the screen anytime soon. <laughs> And if we can, I'll tell you who they are anyway. <laughs> there we go. And that side of the table is uh, the man in the uh, peach-colored shirt is Mr. Tom Haller. Tom, thank you for being here this evening. And Tom is our Area 24 governor. The young sprout next to him <laughs> is Zane Rizwan, and he is sitting in for one of our Toastmaster <coughs> members. And he is here and going to be a timer this evening. Zane, thank you for coming tonight. <coughs> Next to him is a longtime member of the Bearfield Toastmasters, and that is Gisela Zukowski. Zukela is a, a licensed therapist, hypnotherapist here in Fort Wayne, and usually she's busy on Tuesday night. But you know what she always tells me? She says that uh, if you have a special program going on, let me know and I'll be there. And by golly, not only did she come, she brought her friend Doris Christman here this evening. Doris, thank you for coming, and I hope you enjoy this, your first <laughs> Toastmaster experience. Thank you. And on the other side of the table, we have, a, starting at the far end, a young lady named uh, Patricia Kanabi. She is our Division B governor, and she is here to give us a speech and share with us what she knows about Toastmasters. Next to Patricia is... Uh, an old-time member of Bearfield Toastmasters, a man named Toma Davis. Toma has been around Toastmasters for several years, came to us through a speech craft many years ago. And like Cisella, has other commitments on Tuesday night, but for special events, he's willing to get here. So, Toma, thank you for coming tonight. Thank you. Good to see you. And the lady next to Toma, <coughs> the lady I'm very proud to introduce, is my wife, of over 50 years now, my wife Bernice Wilkins, a member of the Bearfield Toastmasters. So that's the crew that we have tonight that is going to be here, and we're going to put on this Toastmaster meeting. Thank you for being here, Bernice. So let us begin. Now, how we begin a Toastmaster meeting as well, with the beginning as a Toastmaster, usually introduced by the president 
Unfortunately, our president could not be here tonight, so for the next few moments, I would like to introduce our first vice president of education, Bernice Wilkins, and she has a welcoming for us for the annual Bernice, please. Thank you, Dave. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody out there, too. I'm just so excited that this is our 28th anniversary. I can't believe it. I joined two years after the club started, so I didn't get in quite at the ground roots. But I've come to know a lot of Toastmasters over the years, and you're just so welcome to join us to celebrate. Dave, I don't know if you wanted uh, a pledge. You can certainly do that right now if you would, please. Okay. Generally, at a meeting, we start with the Pledge of Allegiance. So if everyone would please stand. And join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I think that's always a wonderful way to start a program. And so now we will let the festivities begin. I'll invite our host, our producer and host, Dave Wilkins back to the lectern. Thank you, Bernice. And to let you know about the program tonight, we're going to have two fine speeches, some very interesting table topics, and then the all-important evaluation. And an added attraction is that beautiful cake that's right there in front of me. It looks so good. Uh, first off, we need to have the general evaluator come up here, and he will share with us the evaluation details. Tom Howard. Thank you, Mr. Wilkins. It's always good to be here, and we have a stellar evaluation team this evening. Our first speaker is Patricia, and she will be evaluated by Toma. Our second and final speaker will be Bernice, and she will be evaluated by Gazella. And the table topics will be by none other than myself, and they will be evaluated also by Patricia. One thing we learn in Toastmasters is that you multitask. If you can't multitask, it's probably hopeless. No. <laughs> if you can't multitask before you join Toastmasters, you will after you've been in a while. Our timer is Zane, right? Zane. I almost said Zach. Timer is Zane. We appreciate having him here. Would you want to tell us? Well, no. You don't have a mic, so never mind. Anyway. He has a table mic, but it'll work. Okay. Go ahead and tell us what you'll be looking oh, for in your timer. At five minutes, I'll hold up the green um, sign. At six minutes, I'll hold up the yellow sign. And at seven minutes, I'll hold up the red sign. For table topics, at 30 seconds, um, you'll get the green. 40 seconds, yellow. And at 50 seconds, red. And then um, at 60 seconds, I'll clap okay. you to your seat. Thank you very much. Let's give them a round of applause. If ever there was a budding Toastmaster in the making, there he is. <laughs> Did I forget any major positions this evening? No, we don't have a Bernardian, but okay. the word celebration in the word of the day. Oh, so, okay. Well, we are here for a celebration and a very worthy celebration. I'm not a member of the club, but I'm their area governor, and a fine, upstanding club it is. If you live in that part of town, I would strongly recommend that you look into becoming a part of that club. Mr. Wilkins. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. As you mentioned, the uh, evaluation is really the heart and soul of the Toastmaster program because by using the evaluation that you receive, you can learn to be a better speaker, learn what you've done right, and then learn where you can improve the next time. And overall, it's a growth all the way around. Before I came this evening, and because uh, this is the 28th anniversary, I looked back to the year 1986 and got a few facts. I thought I'd share a few of those with you at this time. In 1986, a new house cost $89,000. The average income that year was $22,000. Wow, okay. A gallon of gasoline. Anybody got a guess of what it was in 1986? 69 cents? Uh, a little bit more than that. It was actually 89 cents but still well below a buck, so you know how that goes. Uh -huh. Okay. 
a jar of Skippy peanut butter. Let's see, we've got any housewives here? Anybody like peanut butter? That's around three staff, seventy nine. Staff alive. How much? Three seventy nine. Three seventy nine. Like that. Anybody else? I just bought some. Well, it, it is now, but in yeah. eighty. Oh, back then. Back then. Mm -hmm. Back then, a, a, a jar of Skippy was a dollar forty nine. Wow. Yeah. Seriously, <laughs> and potatoes. Denise was telling me she pays many dollars for five pounds. Back then, it was a buck. Five pounds for a dollar. For a dollar. Mm. I just paid three ninety nine for that. And broccoli. Ooh, President uh, <laughs> Bush would be so happy to hear this. Broccoli was about thirty nine cents a pound. And bacon. Mm, everybody loves bacon. Dollar seventy nine seventy five a pound back in nineteen eighty six. It doesn't seem like that long ago, and it seems like the older I get, the quicker the years go by. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I have a theory about that. I'll share it a little later on. But let's begin with our speeches, and I have an introduction right here that I'd like to. Yeah. Our first speaker, our Division B governor, is going to be speaking from the Competent Communicator Manual, and she's working on project number seven. Now, project number seven is research your topic, and she has a kind of a new twist on research. So let's welcome, at this time, our own Patricia Kanabi, Division B governor and a DTM. All right. Patricia. Thank you. Thank you, Master Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and most honored guests at home. First, I would like to say happy anniversary to the Bearfield Toastmasters Club. 28 years is a long time to be an active, thriving club. 28 years is a long time for any organization to be in business or to be operating a club or an organization to last for 20, 28 years needs to have a lot of qualities that speak success. It has to have dedicated members. It has to have a vision, a goal. It has to have people who are willing to work toward those goals. And with Toastmasters as a volunteer organization, sometimes it's a little tricky finding people to work towards those goals in a club setting. So to be sitting here and honoring the Bearfield Toastmasters Club for 28 years is phenomenal. Dave Wilkins shared last night at another meeting that Ralph Smedley started Toastmasters 90 years ago this year. He started it in 1924. 1924. 90 years ago. That means that Bearfield Toastmasters has been around for a third, almost a third, of the time that Toastmasters has been in existence. How many clubs can say that? Not very many. I am very proud to be part of this division that has such successful, solid clubs in it. Bearfield has, has its home at Penguin Point, which is a restaurant in South Fort Wayne for those of you watching at home. But Bear, the Bearfield Toastmasters Club has not always met at Penguin Point. Before that, they met at Atz's Restaurant on the south side of Fort Wayne. They also met at the Bearfield Airport, which is the former name for Fort Wayne International Airport. And Dave Wilkins has shared with me that there were a few other locations as well, but those were the three main locations that Bearfield Toastmasters resided in. And it's nice that Bearfield Toastmasters has found a home at, at the Penguin Point restaurant to help it continue to grow and strive and be the dynamic club that it is. We have some wonderful members here today who have belonged to the Bearfield Club either currently or in the past. And I would like to call on each one of them in turn and ask for a special memory of the Bearfield Toastmasters Club, what it means to you or has meant to you, maybe what it has done for you in your personal life, and a special little something that you remember about the club. 
I'm going to start over here with, with Gisela. Would you share a memory with us, please? Uh, I'd like to say hello to everybody here. I haven't been here for a while, but um, I just can't not be a member because everybody's like family here. And what first drew me to Toastmasters, I had thought about it for a long, long time, but I didn't have the confidence to want to join until two members at that time that I went to church with happened to mention it, and I spoke to them about it and told them about, you know, my backwardness about joining, that I would probably crumble if somebody would, would tell me that I did lousy or anything like that. And they said, it's not like that at all, that... Uh, they tell that when you, first of all, you don't start out with a big speech. That That's not the way it is, they told me. That you're gradually eased into it and that everybody's very helpful and very nice. And uh, that, um, and boy, if I was getting caught to, to, to figure out how many ahs I've said, I'd really get the booby prize today. Uh, but, so I should come back, right? <laughs> but... What uh, I learned is that they don't criticize you when you give a talk. They tell you all the things that you did well, and then if they feel that there's something you can do to improve your talk, they give that as a suggestion. There's never really any criticism. So I felt very comfortable right from the start. Wonderful. And Thank you. I am next going to call on... Toma, you haven't been with the club for a while. I would love to hear your thoughts. Thank you. Uh, and to the t uh, rest of the Toastmasters here and to the general public, to the public who's listening on uh, via TV to tonight, I think about the year 98, it was uh, late 97 or uh, early 98 when I became a member of Toastmasters. I came from a group of people, a group of us came and joined at the same time. It was called Project Read. And that, that, that title was We Helped Children K through three to read to that grade level by the time they complete the third grade. That was our goal at that time. And I want to say that I'm still, in 97 is when I became, well, I first became uh, involved with uh, Toast, uh, not Toastmasters, with um, uh, Project Read in 97. And in, yes, in 97, as a volunteer at my church. And then from there, someone, one of the people that came, suggested to the director at that time that since we had to go out and recruit people to volunteer, and we had to make speeches at different, oh, we went everywhere. We went all over Fort Wayne talking to people, getting them to volunteer to tutor children. And one of the places, some, one of the people that was Mary Adams at that particular time said, um, will you uh, talk to the, the director? You know, we need to learn how to speak to a group of people. We, have, we had all kind of nerves and <laughs> Toastmasters. Uh, sell those nerves down. I didn't like to say, me, you know, say the butterflies that get in you, get in you or something in here. Say, so, well, they still are there, but we know as Toastmasters, you will learn how to have them to go around in circle in order. <laughs> this is what we, what we are very proud of. This is what Toastmasters has meant to me during that time. I was able to, I think I was able to help a number of children, and I helped a number of people, I think, to volunteer to come. And I'm also still working on the idea of having people to come and join Toastmasters. If, if you really want to do something to help yourself to become a better speaker, it doesn't matter if you are a lawyer, you are a doctor, uh, you, what kind of degree that you have, to get up before an audience to start talking is very terrifying. Come to Toastmasters and sell those nerves down and you will be a much better speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Bernice, do you ha do you have a thought for us? I joined Toastmasters. I had to give up my bowling leg. Oh no! I love to bowl. I bowled every Tuesday night. But I did come and visit the 
Bearfield Toastmasters Club, I already belonged to another Toastmaster Club, and the people were so nice and so friendly, I gave up my bowling. I joined Bearfield Toastmasters, I think that was probably in 87, maybe, or 88. The club had existed maybe a couple of years, so I wasn't anywhere near a charter member, but I was right there close to the beginning of the club. Thank you. And last but certainly not least, Dave, what, 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 what thoughts do you have about memories of Bearfield Toastmasters? Well, right now I happen to be the old man of Bearfield Toastmasters, a <laughs> distinction I'm not real crazy about, but I had no choice. Uh, I, I, too, had belonged to another club, the Anthony Wayne Toastmasters, one of the really old clubs here in Fort Wayne. And because of a speech craft being held at Bearfield, I helped and volunteered at that a few weekends. And one of, well, actually there were three people who were part of that speech craft that I thought were just awesome fellows, and I thought, I want to get to know them better, so when, when the speech craft is over, I'm going to join so we'll all be members of the same club together. And I went ahead and joined right away. Don't you know, not one of those dudes joined the club <laughs> at that time. I guess they got what they wanted from the speech craft, which, by the way, is a terrific six-week course that you can take. And if that's all you want, you get in, you get out, and you do have a, a grounding. But it was more than just the grounding for me because... I really liked the members. We had Rich Cooper and we had so many other people who I have come to know and admire over the years. And they have kept me coming back year after year. And thank you for the question and allow me to revisit my memories, Patricia. Thank you. Thank you. I have some fond memories of Bearfield Toastmasters myself. Before I was Division B governor, I was Area 24 governor and I was lucky enough to have Bearfield Toastmasters in my area. I remember the 25th anniversary party that was held at Hall's Restaurant on Bluffton Road, and it was such a memorable night. Great food, great company, a wonderful program. Besides that, every time I visit the Bearfield Toastmasters Club, I am welcomed with open arms. I am asked to participate in the meetings, Everybody is friendly and warm and, as I said, welcoming. It's a wonderful club to be involved in. If you are thinking of joining a club, certainly think of the Bearfield Toastmasters Club. It is thriving. It has wonderful talent, wonderful speakers in it. Their evaluation session is very productive. You learn a lot from them. Plus, the camaraderie of Toastmasters is very prevalent in this particular club. My home club is the American Red Cross Toastmasters Club, and we chartered approximately eight years ago, 20 years after Bear Field Toastmasters chartered. My hope for the American Red Cross Club is that we can be as thriving and as welcoming and as nurturing as the Bear Field Toastmasters Club is. On a final note, Dave Wilkins mentioned Speechcraft, and Speechcraft is how he came to be a Bearfield Toastmasters member. And I would like to make one small plug in my conclusion for a Speechcraft event that is coming up in Fort Wayne. Toastmasters has partnered with Fort Wayne Community Schools in their lifelong learning program, and we are hosting a, to a Speechcraft for the weeks of February 19th, through March 26th. Every consecutive Wednesday for six weeks, we will be meeting at Anthus Career Center in room six, and we will teach, a team of Toastmasters is going to teach the participants in this program what it is to be a Toastmaster. We will introduce them to the Toastmasters way of running a meeting from crafting a speech to evaluating a speech, and we welcome the public to participate. Please go to your brochure that you received in the mail and register for Speechcraft. We would love to see you. Lastly, congratulations, Bearfield Toastmasters. I'm very proud that you are part of this division. Master Toastmaster. Thank you. Very good presentation, Patricia. That was inspiring and that was fun. Too.
Remember, this is a live show. That number is 422-3902. If you want to call in, we would love to hear from you. A plus for joining Bearfield is, although it's a small club, now we have a limited membership right now, but that means that if you want to get practice public speaking, that is indeed the club to go to because you can get on the program just about any time that you want. So keep that in mind if you want to get a lot of public speaking in. A few more facts that you might find interesting about 1986. Halley's Comet came the closest to planet Earth that has had in over 76 years in the second visit to our solar system during the 19th or the 20th century. Also, Mike Tyson became the youngest heavyweight champion in the world. There was also a survey, a full-blown survey in Ireland of Loch Ness to see if the Loch Ness monster really did exist. No. <laughs> um, and also the Duchess of Windsor, Wallace Simpson, the lady who married uh, the past king of England who gave up his throne. She died in 1986 and was buried alongside her husband in uh, Windsor Castle. Some interesting, more interesting facts about uh, 1986. Our next speaker has been around Toastmasters for several years. We've established that a few times and it's really true. She has served as an area governor and she's also served as a division governor. Area governor three or four, maybe five times. Division governor at least three times. She's been with Bearfield Toastmasters 26 of those 28 years. Now the purpose of her speech <clears throat> is to share fond memories of Bearfield members from the past. Some here, not some not so much here. Help me welcome with her speech titled "Tales of Bearfield Toastmasters Past." Bernice Wilkins. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, most welcome guests, and the viewing audience. Toastmasters come from all walks of life. We've had people who have been factory workers, management. We've had young people just starting their careers, and we've had retired people that have just finished their careers. We've had, you wouldn't believe this, preachers and teachers. What would they need to learn about public speaking? They do it all the time. But they tell me there's a difference between preaching and teaching and just giving a speech to a normal audience. Big difference. The teacher is like this. <laughs> and the preacher, of course, is preaching. And speaking of preachers, I'm going to talk about Toastmasters past from this club. Not in any particular order. But I will start with Reverend Harold Raines, the founder of Bearfield Toastmasters. He was a reverend. He preached. And what was amazing about the man was that when he joined, he was in his 80s. He was still preaching, still working with young people, very active. And in his 80s, he decided he wanted to be a DTM, Distinguished Toastmaster, the very highest level of toastmastering that you can aspire to. And I don't know what that sign says. I'm sorry, I don't have my glasses on. Okay. So Harold Raines decided to become a DTM. He was in his 80s. This is a very difficult job. It takes a long time to get a DTM. It requires a lot of effort. But that's what he wanted. And one of the things he had to do was start a Toastmaster club. He started Bearfield Toastmasters. An amazing man. But you know he had a secret life that I don't think anybody knew about. I walked into Southtown Mall one day. In the center of the mall were grandfather clocks. I like grandfather clocks. I like clocks anyway. So I went over to look at the clocks. There was Harold Raines. Reverend Raines, are you buying a grandfather's clock tonight? No, Bernice. I was selling them. Can you believe that? In his 80s, he was out there selling grandfather clocks. I never did hear the rest of that story, but I was amazed. He was one of the astounding people that I met here at Bearfield Toastmasters, the founder of the club. 
Another man that I remember was Richard Crick. He belonged to Anthony Wayne Toastmasters, but he also joined Bearfield to help them be grounded and get a good beginning. Richard was kind of an unusual man. He was a little bit stern. I, he didn't have a whole lot of a sense of humor, I didn't think. And he was blind in one eye. Dave and I traveled with he and his wife to a region conference, and it scared me to death. His wife, Ethel, sat there in the passenger seat and kept feeding him information about the traffic on her side of the car. I was absolutely <laughs> terrified, but he'd been driving that way all of his life, and as far as I know, never had any accidents. Absolutely shocked the heck out of me. At breakfast, he was sitting there. Maybe I shouldn't tell him this. <laughs> His glass eye fell out on the table. <laughs> no kidding. And Dave, ever the comic, says, Oh, Richard, you're always keeping an eye out for us. <laughs> As I said, Richard didn't have much of a sense of humor, but Ethel laughed, his wife. That, that was really something to remember. No wonder I remember him. But there were a lot of other people. There was Hugh Flannery. He was a history buff. He gave me a topic question that I'll never forget. And I'll never forget, forget my answer either. Very simple. He said, Bernice, if Hitler had won World War II, how do you think your life would be changed? And I told him, well, I think I'd probably be speaking German now. <laughs> that was pretty much the extent of my answer. He, he had some usual, unusual topic sessions. And his brother-in-law, Eric Richardson, he was given a topic question. Tell us how you sell something. How would you sell something? He picked up a bottle of ketchup from the table. We met in a restaurant at the time and proceeded to sell the bottle of ketchup. Also, another time, giving a speech at the lectern, he got so excited and hit that lectern so hard, he split the wood. He destroyed our lectern. Very, uh, very unusual people, I guess you would say. Interesting people, people that I remember. Not for any particular reason, maybe, except just these stories, these little happenings along the way were most unusual. We had some celebrities. We had a man, his name was Harold West, but he was better known in the professional wrestling world as the Canadian Rose, and he was the bad guy that everybody booed. And he would take people and slam them on the floor and then run to the net and bounce off the net and put them back down on the ground again. And now the audience would be hooting and booing and carrying on. And he laughed about it. He told us in some of his speeches how they would afterwards ride in a bus to the next city, all together, all of them, and joke and laugh about how the evening went and play cards and were the best of friends, and then here they would get in the ring, and they were enemies again. So that was pretty funny. He was really an interesting man. We have a lot of Toastmasters that are now meeting in that great Toastmaster meeting in the sky. The last one I want to talk about was known worldwide. Everybody knew him. He performed. He danced with the likes of Louis Armstrong and Ella Fitzgerald and a lot of famous people. And he came to Toastmasters because he didn't want to just perform. He wanted to be able to speak. But you know what? He was always on. We couldn't get him to quit performing. <laughs> I, I ran into him. He'd been ill, hadn't been to any meetings. I ran into him in Kmart, tapped him on the shoulder. Al, we haven't seen you forever. We heard you were sick, but you're looking pretty good now. And he looked at me kind of strangely, and he said, uh, yeah, I have been sick. He had a shirt on. It wasn't, it wasn't like he usually dressed. It said Al here, like he worked in a filling station or something. Anyway, I said, well, I, I hope you come back soon because we really miss you. When he went out the door, it suddenly hit me. That wasn't my Al. My Al was black. This Al was white. <laughs> and I'm talking, of course, about the wonderful Al Stiles. Al Stiles, wonderful man, was a Bearfield postmaster. I'm so proud to say that. We've had a lot of other people I would love to talk about. But this just gives you an idea of the different people that joined Bearfield Toastmasters. We meet at Penguin Point on the south side of Fort Wayne, Tuesday evenings, we usually eat at, get something to eat at 6, and our meeting starts at 6.30. And we don't meet the second Tuesday of the month. That's the only caveat. 
So please come and join us on Tuesdays at 6.30 at Pennington Point. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you very much, Bernice. And boy, you're bringing back memories of people that I haven't thought about in a long time. 1986 was the year that Nintendo brought out its first game system for kids, $89. Popular films that year. Can you remember anything from 1986? How about uh, Top Gun? Tom Cruise, yeah. Crocodile Dundee. Oh, now that was a movie we're seeing. The Color of Money with uh, Paul Newman. And one of our very favorite movies is Ruthless People with uh, Bette Midler. Oh, that is so funny. Popular musicians that year included uh, Billy Joel, Robert Palmer, Whitney Houston, she sang The Greatest Love of All. You know. uh, the Pretenders, remember that group? Now, they were from a long time ago, but still popular in the 86. Culture Club with Boy George, by my, my. Bruce Springsteen. There were some great TV shows that year, too, like Magnum P.I., who can forget Dynasty? I thought well, that would run forever. And everybody met and had a good time at Cheers. So those were all shows that started in 1986. Isn't that something? Now it's time for that fun portion of the program. Some people call it the terrible topics. Some call it just whatever. But it's the time when you get a chance to speak extemporaneously. Let's welcome our topic master, a man doing double duty tonight, Mr. Tom Haller. Tom, please. Thank you, Mr. Wilkins. I noticed there's a double standard here. Patricia, he warned about the cords running here. Me is hoping for a pratfall to increase ratings. Right? Oh, maybe not. All right. Everybody here, and I assume many people outside, know that Bob Norris, one of our regulars, is in the hospital. He's had a very serious heart attack, and we're all very depressed about that and sad, but... Patricia, could you tell us what impact this has had on the district, if there have been any changes, what's going on relative to Bob's absence from Toastmastery? Okay. Thank, oh, you. You're welcome, Patricia. Thank you, Tom. With Bob being absent from Toastmasters, we have had to make a few changes in the top three of the district, the top three leaders of the district. As Magnus Jansen, our district governor, said at our officers' training last Saturday, he is not asking that Bob Norris step down from his leadership position at this time. For those of you who don't know, Bob Norris is our current lieutenant governor of education and training. However, he has not woken up from his surgery yet. He cannot do his responsibilities. He cannot handle his duties right now. So in his place, Meg Claxton, who is a former district governor, has stepped in, and she will be taking over in his absence as lieutenant governor of education and training. Beyond that, it is status quo as far as the rest of us doing what we do in Toastmasters to make it the successful organization it is, with the exception of praying for Bob. <laughs> All right, thank you for that insight. Well, one of the things I enjoy about Toastmasters <clears throat> is meeting people who have unusual occupations. So, Gazella, could you tell us what it is to be a hypnotherapist? I'm just not familiar with that concept. Thank you. Um, my doctorate is in clinical and medical hypnosis. Uh, what uh, I do is quite different from other hypnotists where the other ones only give suggestions under hypnosis for change. I go way beyond that. My doctorate is in regression therapy where I can regress the person's subconscious mind, which is the same thing as when you're daydreaming. You're fully aware, but you're not making yourself think at the moment. So all you do is just listen, and I can regress their subconscious mind like a computer of their entire existence to go only to the things that are causing the problem. And just like a computer, it'll go only to those incidents causing the problem. And then I direct their mind to correct those feelings and emotions. And most things I get done in three or four sessions, uh, even 
bipolar and schizophrenics and serious conditions can be helped with this. Everything is caused by something. And another <clears throat> interesting aspect of Toastmasters is you learn more about people, find out what people do. Aside from helping them learn to read, yeah. Toma, what, what have you done for a living in your life? Uh, fellow Toastmasters and general evaluator, uh, topic master. During my life, I've done a number of things, but let's start out with the last one. Uh, I started out selling Kirby vacuum cleaners. Are you, are, you, are you familiar with I mean, a lot of the ladies in here during that time. That was a second job for me. I had a job working at the post office, and I just wasn't making the kind of money that I wanted to make, so I took a second job. So I, I decided I wanted to learn how to sell, and Kirby vacuum cleaners gave me the opportunity to go out to knock on doors to go to total strangers in strange neighborhoods and put that crib before people and to walk away with a sale. And this is how I moved into later owning a furniture store called Golden Opportunities in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Oh. This is what from one sales job, and I completed that in 1983. Uh -huh. Thank you. Okay, very interesting indeed. Maybe afterwards I'll ask you if you know Robert Knox. He was, no. he was a Kirby vacuum sales manager. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Bernice, you have told us about <clears throat> the early days of Bearfield. Tell us about the early days of Toastmastering in general. What has changed since you become a Toastmaster? What's, what's new and exciting? Mr. Topic Master, fellow Toastmasters. <laughs> when I joined Toastmasters, I thought it was all about speaking, and I was fairly comfortable anyway. I didn't really feel like I needed it a whole lot. Although, after I belonged a while, I did find out how I could sharpen my skills and be a more effective speaker. But the real change was the leadership roles. I didn't want to have anything to do with being at the front of the crowd, being the leader. I wanted to stay back in the corner and be a follower. But through Toastmasters, I learned how to step into the leadership role and make decisions and set goals and inspire people to accomplish the things that we needed accomplished, Mr. Topic Master. All right. We're getting near the end of our people to call upon. Mr. Wilkins, would you like to address the issue of this ridiculous snow we're having all winter long? What can we do about this? Why are we here? Why have we moved away? That's because we don't know what the heck we're doing, Mr. Topic Master. <laughs> I could sum it up in one four-letter word. In fact, that's what snow is, is a four-letter word. <laughs> Bear in mind you're on television. Yes. <laughs> when I was a little kid, we used to have a, a cold snap. Now we have Arctic Vortex. Ooh, I, I don't know if it's gotten better with the Arctic Vortex or worse, but... Uh, <clears throat> I didn't like snow as a child. I wasn't real crazy about it as a, a teenager or growing up. And I like it even less uh, as I grow older. In fact, I can't understand why I live here, <laughs> except that that's where everything it is that I own and love is right here in Fort Wayne. <laughs> everything that is but the S-N-O-W. <laughs> and while you're still standing, let me return control to you as our Toastmaster, Mr. Wilkins. Well, thank you, Tom, and thank you for some terrific questions. That was great. More questions about 1986. That was the year that England and France decided to build that tunnel under the English Channel called the Channel. I never thought we'd ever ride on it, but we certainly did, and I thought... What an exciting ride that's going to be. Not so. The tunnel is a hole in the ground, and holes in the ground are by nature dark, and they're not going to be wasteful of electricity and light the darn thing. So for 17 minutes, while we whizzed like lightning through it, you couldn't see diddly squat out those windows. So. <laughs> 86 was also, unfortunately, the year of the horrible Challenger disaster. That that just cut to the hearts of everybody and all of us about thinking about that. 
And on a more positive note, in England, British surgeons performed the triple, the first triple transplant bypass, and that was the heart, lung, and liver. And I think that that was pretty darn wonderful, if you ask me. Well, we're moving right along here, but we're up to the point now in the program where we want to do the evaluations. So let me call at this time our general evaluator, Tom Mallard, for his evaluation. Mr. Wilkins, just hold the ropes here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right, moving right along. Our first speaker was Patricia, and she will be evaluated by Toma. Go ahead. Wherever you want to be. And to the uh, fellow Toastmasters, let me do something just a little bit different here. We're here, I want to be a recruiter tonight. For the people at home who are listening to and looking at this program, I'm here to evaluate the area governor. Just think, think now how, many, how that person has risen through the ranks to become in the position that they are in now. But here's what I want to do with this evaluation. I want to tell you, I think uh, Gazeska talked on it a little bit here earlier. This is not, did I pronounce your name right? Okay. This is not a critique, a uh, criticism of a person. When you come up to evaluate them, you come, we have, an, and she is so nicely brought something, a guideline for me to go by. I remember when we first joined uh, from Dave Wilkin, was my mentor here at the time, and we came up, we wrote down little things with the, but, you know, the different things that we would have to go by, we had an outline because, I mean, when you first come in, they start teaching you all of this. But I have an outline to go by here. Let me just say to this audience here, we're not criticizing her. We, what has, what has she done? And I got an outline to go by. So I, this is real easy for me. The first one, let me put my glasses on here and let's see. The first one is, how well did the speaker topic apply to the audience? I want these new people to know this is not criticism. I thought she was great. That's what I put down. Okay, the next thing, the next question, was the topic well uh, researched? Well, I don't know. And what I did, I put a question mark down there. Was it research? I don't know. She was so good at it. She just did, went in and did her job. How well did the speaker support his or her main point? I thought she did a magnificent job by involving the rest of us here at this 28th anniversary tonight when she involved the rest of us here to come and speak. I thought a tremendous job that she did on that. Uh, was the support material appropriate for the point? Well, of course, those of us, we talked about what uh, our Toastmasters, the founding of Toastmasters, and how we became involved. Yes. Did the speaker vary the, uh, the, the types of support material? Well, yes, because she had different one of us to start and speak. Real easy. How clear was the speaker's purpose? Very, very clear. We knew where she was came when she first came up here. We knew exactly what she was, uh, was doing in here. Did the speaker take advantage of the body language and vocal variety? Yes, she did. I mean, and she did it through the rest of us here. So you people at home, evaluation, I want this to stick in your mind, evaluation is not criticism. It is a way of us to help you improve. It also helped each one of us because when we get up there and we want to know, then we'll try to emulate what that person, she did such a good job, I hope I can emulate her. Did the speaker take advantage of the body, language, and vocal? Yes. What could the speaker have done different to improve the speech? Only one thing that I'm going to find that I think I, want, I, like, I, think I would like to have her improve on. You notice the Toastmasters, you notice these, these ones who I call them the two pros, those two people sitting over here. You notice when they come in, one of the things Toastmasters tell you, if you don't know what to do with your hand, just drop them to your side down here and speak and speak to the people. Now, the one thing that this speaker did, I saw her hands right here. Now, we're going to, this is the one thing that we would say that's the improvement. The next time that she get up to speak before the group of people, for you and the audience out there, she would just drop her hands to the side and do that, beautiful, give a beautiful delivery as she done. Mr. General Evaluator. Thank you very much. And we will move right on to our next evaluator who will be evaluating the lady who is 
taken color blindness to a new high. Could you evaluate for this? Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Bernice always makes it so easy to evaluate her because I don't see where there's ever any need for improvement. <laughs> I wish I could do that as, and to give talks as well as you do. You, you, everything you said was relevant to the topic and to make us understand what this was really all about. I loved the stories and the antidotes that you gave. I, I think everybody did. You got a lot of laughs and chuckles over them. Now, I would have loved to have heard even more had time permitted. So there really is nothing that I can say wasn't perfect and excellent. And as far as giving any uh, suggestions to improve it, I don't know about anybody else, but I can't think of anything. <laughs> So I give you an A plus on what you had to say. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. I wanted to talk about Woody. I got to get around to it. <laughs> okay, moving on to the topic evaluation session. We have none other than our division governor, <coughs> Patricia Kanabe. Patricia, tell us how we did. Thank you, Master General Evaluator and also Table Topics Master. It's always nice when a Toastmaster can do double duty if it is asked of him or her, and we, we ask that of many of our members in clubs when somebody can't make a meeting, whether it's weather-related or otherwise. I must say that... Tom, for you being Table Topics Master, you handled the assignment that happened very quickly because our Table Topics Master did not arrive due to the weather. You, you came together with some questions very quickly and, and very astutely, and you asked each of us a question that was pertinent to us personally. Now, in Table Topics, we are supposed to give a mini-speech in about a minute to two minutes. It must have an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. And the rule is, if you go over the time, you are clapped down. I'm guilty. I was the only one clapped down because I was so involved in talking about Bob Norris and impassioned that I forgot to look at, at, at the timing that, that Zane was so expertly exhibiting for me, and I was basically ignoring the time, and I apologize for that. But everybody had a wonderful story to tell in the short amount of time, an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. You finished in beautiful times. Great job by everybody. Thank you so much. Watch the board. And the last, and by no means least, member of our group will be our timer. Now, I should warn you, the guy on his right was kibitzing him a bit, so he may be a little bit off on his time, but we will find out. Zach, tell us how it is. Um, Patricia asked for five to seven minutes and spoke for seven minutes and 40 seconds. Bernice asked for five to seven, too, and um, spoke for seven minutes and um, 39 seconds. Uh, for table topics, um, Patricia spoke for one minute and 10 seconds. Gisela asked, um, spoke right. for one minute and two seconds. Ta Toma spoke for 54 seconds. Bernice spoke for 47 seconds. And Dave spoke for 53 seconds. Um, the Toma evaluating took three minutes and 59 minutes. Or no. Yeah, three minutes and 59 seconds, and Gazella um, spoke for one minute and two seconds. And um, for the Table Topics Evaluator, uh, Patricia spoke for one minute and 41 seconds. If ever there was a future Toastmaster, future Toastmaster leader, why, that would surely be him. 
In conclusion, I would say overall it's been an excellent meeting. I thought it was just very well done. I'll be perfectly honest, as I was driving here and the snow was getting deeper, I thought about stopping in and saying, I'm headed out. <laughs> I just, enough is enough, and I don't need to see this. To lie. But I am delighted that I stayed to the end. I hope we all get home safely, and I would ask that you keep Bob Norris in your prayers, but they do not want visitors at his place. And on that note, I will return control to none other than Mr. Wilkins. Well, thank you, Tom, for your excellent evaluation team. And thanks to everyone who has done just a wonderful job. A little bit more pop culture from the 1986 era. TV shows that year included Remington Steele, The A-Team, remember them? Yes, yeah, sir. Murder, She Wrote, what a show that was. The Cosby Show, and na 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 The Twilight Zone. <laughs> We're down to our last minute. Doris, do you have any comments for us tonight? Oh, thank you. Well, thank you, Doris, for being here. <laughs> Patricia, as a division governor, do you have any final comments? Please, everyone, drive home safely. Thank you so much for coming out this evening on, on such an inclement night, and congratulations, Bearfield Toastmasters. Thank you. Uh, Tom, anything? Um, as I said before, Bearfield's an excellent club. If you're in the South Party Town, available that time of day. By all means, check it out. Go for it. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Zane. Nope. Okay. Let's give Zane another hand for a great yeah. job. Right. Gisela. I, I would like to ask everyone, including the viewing audience, to say a prayer yeah. for, for Bob Norris. Absolutely. That he'll recover fully. He's yeah. such a young man yet and yes, such is. an effective personality. And I do believe in miracles, and I do believe in prayers. Okay. Well, they both will yes. do indeed work. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you one and all for being here this evening. This has just been delightful. We've had... Uh, in the sound pedagogical... We have had Robert Boyd and Don Rizwan in the booth. We have Dennis Osborne on audio. And Elizabeth Ward getting us on the air. We want to thank Allen County Public Library and Access One. And we'll be back here okay, next okay. month on the uh, first Tuesday, or I guess it would be the fourth uh, of the month, and we will have another hour of speakers and leaders. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for making this a special event. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the cake. Yay! <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. 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 That, 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 that